Hello, everybody. Hey, everyone. Are we all... Whoops. Oh, no, where, we all... where are there chimes? No anyway. chimes, yes. <laughs> Mo says, are we all waiting, or is it just me? No, it was us too. Yeah. Everyone was waiting, but yeah. hopefully you're not anymore. Um, watch this space. Ah, there's some numbers coming on in. <laughs> Hello. Thank you very much what? for waiting. Here we are. Nada was here. Wow. Hey everyone. One o'clock well in the morning. <laughs> yeah, well <laughs> done. Like the, the... First time um, for Trey to be joining. Oh. Wow. Good to hear from you. And Gina. Oh, yeah. Speaking of first time joining, do we, we have something? Well, we do. Yes, we have something. So, uh. <laughs> if you, like Trey, are a yeah. first time joiner, there you go. Please put a bunny rabbit into yes. the chat. And if, you if are... you're like Gina here, who I happen to know has joined many times, there you go. please hit us with that tiger. Yep, like that one. This, you don't yes. use this information at all. It's just for fun. Or any other tiger or cat, to be honest. Mm, yeah, yeah, people put do. all sorts in. Yeah. Hello to you all. Great to see everyone here. Um, so what you can expect from today is Michael here, who will introduce himself a bit more in a minute. Hey, everyone. Um, a yeah, senior we actually developer. really introduce ourselves. Yeah, we do. I thought we should yeah, do that. Yeah. A senior developer who um, yes. has worked in the industry for six years now will Seven, be yeah. reviewing some of your real-life coding projects, which you've sent in to us. Very yes. exciting. So, yeah, Michael, why don't you tell us in three sentences uh, what you get up to in the tech industry? Three sentences. Um, I write code. Yep. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> I like writing code. And um, I've been doing it for a while. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I suppose that, that's good enough. Yes, but uh, why do you... Yeah, well, basically, a lot of people have been asking us to, like, uh, give, give suggestions about how to review code, you know, and maybe uh, if uh, you can self-review a lot of code because quite often, you know, before you submit a code for review, you got to go through a couple of passes for it just to make sure that it's good enough. Yeah. So hopefully I'll give you a couple of tips that uh, lots of people are look, what people are looking for in a review and hopefully they'll improve your code in general before you even submit it to a review, you know, like a review before a review. Absolutely. So Looking really for best practices, optimization strategies, and potential areas for improvement. Wow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes. Um, Looking forward to this. I don't know how many code reviews I have done, but according to my GitHub, um, it, it, I actually looked at it today, and it's a, like a lot, apparently. So presumably, as a senior developer, you are reviewing code. Uh, to be honest, you review other people's code. Uh, it, it's not just a quality check to make sure that other people's code is good, uh, but it's also you're reviewing it because you want to learn something. Mm -hmm. um, so you review code as a junior, uh, mostly because you want to learn something. Uh, you review code as a mid-level developer, kind of both to learn and to check. And uh, I think that kind of uh, balance of 50-50 kind of remains throughout your career, I suppose. Um, Interesting. So it's not just the senior devs out there who are reviewing. It's also a learning experience. Yes, and I would say that senior devs uh, review each other's code because there is a lot of learning in it as well. Um, you know, you kind of cover some particular aspect of business that other devs haven't covered. No. Uh, you're documenting some parts. You have probably fixed some bugs that you want others to be aware of. That that's what was happening. Uh, so yeah, you, you're not just to yeah, I would say that 50-50 code review means uh, you're improving something, you are stopping a bigger issue, and uh, yeah, you're improving yourself and you're learning um, more in general uh, to, to become even better. Good to know. Um, we're going to get onto the code reviews very shortly. Yes. But first, <laughs> Flexempt, hello from Georgia. Hello to you. Um, Georgia country or Georgia state? I think we've asked this before, uh -huh. but I don't remember what the answer was. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> let us know where you're tuning on in for. Tuning on, tuning, where you are. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jao's first time here. Wow, from Mexico. Cool. Welcome nice. to you. So anyway, on to the all-important tasks. Here we are with the very first um, one. 
It's called We Are The Champions. Remember this, Michael? Uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, basically people who submitted us before the stream a couple of um, projects that they want us to review. And uh, basically that's what we look at. Yeah, we'll review some of the uh, viewer submissions. Yeah, so oh. take it away. Let's have a look at We Are The Champions. Yes, uh, so I suppose like one of the first things that uh, people usually look at is, you know, you try to, you know, you check out the PR, uh, you obviously look through the code, but occasionally you can spot something and normally it's just like a quick sanity check. Uh, but then you will probably try to, uh, you know, instead of just writing, you yeah, good code and uh, you submit. Uh, your review, uh, you probably want to improve a little bit on on that, and usually you want to try out what's uh, actually been done. You know, you you check the tests and stuff like that. Uh, but I tend to check out the piece of code and try to play around with it, uh, try to play around with the functionality, and uh, then uh, see what happens. So I could see that uh, you know the the whole project I think was uh, to create like an endorsement page so there is like a form uh, with a couple of fields and when you publish there is uh, a bunch of like messages that pop up in uh, the bottom so for example I'll try to see a new message from me to you something publish and then I'll see okay see so, what actually happens yeah. does it work as expected yeah does it work and uh, there you go yeah so i'll try to click on that or something maybe is there some other functionality uh but yeah the general general thing it works i can see that um so there was like some endorsements before i'll try to publish with empty fields mm -hmm. and i can see that nothing gets published so I'll try to figure out like why, why is that the case? Uh, should, should there be something? So if uh, if it shouldn't be published with empty fields, I can actually, like why is nothing happening? Should so, get some feedback there. Yeah, so there should be some kind of feedback saying, um, you know, maybe the button should be grayed out until you can actually mm -hmm. do uh, the action. Or maybe the old red border around the inputs. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting because the first part of the code review, you're not actually looking at the code, you're just using the app. Yes, uh, I tend to uh, I tend to just to have a look at, you know, uh, I'm introducing myself to it as a user. So if I know nothing about it, it also gives a little bit of user testing to to this feature. Mm. So usually you get tagged you get tagged into a review and there people say hi. Can you review this code and you'll never been familiar with it? Yeah, sometimes it takes a lot of setup and stuff. And also there is organizational dynamic about like how much in depth you're supposed to be going. Um, and like what are aspects of code review that we are responsible for? Obviously, you know, if you work for a very big company uh, and you get tagged in a lot of reviews, it would be like, it's not your full time job to be reviewing code like that all the time. So, might be outside of your scope to do the user yeah. testing. Yeah, so a lot of people will be trying to focus, like, for example, you get tagged because your team is responsible for this small part of the code change, and you're just there to double check a couple of things, and that's it. You know, you're just making sure that with, as far as your team is concerned, integration is good, that kind of stuff. So you will say, okay, that's good. Uh, but I think that that's all predetermined with an organization, or your manager can tell you, or you can figure out yourself. Uh, basically, it's yeah. There is no hard and fast rule, uh, but if you're working in a small startup, you know there's just a handful of you. Chances are you'll be doing this, even if you've not been asked to. Might yeah, be worth it. exactly. Um, yep. Sounds so, good. Yeah, uh, and then after that, you will basically quickly just uh, have a look at, like, in terms of HTML. Uh, you know, I'm usually not the person to go to and that kind of stuff, but I will still just to have a look at. Um, if there's anything glaringly wrong or... Yeah, exactly. Uh, again, it also depends whose code you're reviewing. So I'm um, always trying to tailor it to the person, uh, like to the actual recipient of the review. Uh, I think there is a, a really good um, how to 
uh, Claude Rue, I think his name is Michael Lynch, I think. Oh, there you go. How to do hmm. code reviews like a human. Uh, and I really, I, I remember really early in my career, uh, actually 2017, maybe it wasn't that early in my career. Anyway. Um, <laughs> earlier than now, anyway. Yeah, uh, earlier than now, I have come across this article and uh, it has kind of supported a lot of my thinking about code reviews at the time. Uh, but also I quite like to just link to it because it's already quite succinct uh, view on how to be, you know, how not to be an ass during the reviews and how to just be a very uh, friendly co-worker while you're reviewing code. Uh, so... <laughs> Why is this hard? <laughs> yeah, and it is hard. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you're trying to, like, uh, you know, linters and stuff like that, so you're not picking people on syntactical errors and, uh, you know, like, formatting issues, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, and there are a couple of good things about uh, how people try to style it and stuff. Uh, usually, whenever I join a company, I actually link these two articles into a PR review template. So, there you go, both of them. Uh, yeah, into that's, PR review template. So whenever there is a PR on the screen now. Yep, that's one. Uh, so whenever PR is creating GitHub, uh, one of the first links that reviewers see is basically links to these things. So whenever you come across and you've never seen this before, it's like a good couple of articles to remind yourself, I suppose. Yes. Um, good stuff. Yeah. Any comments on this? So uh, obviously, because it's a very fairly early on in our career, uh, I would say that you know it's pretty good. Uh, normally, if it's a big application, I would probably say like uh, let's not hard code uh, English uh, sentences and phrases like that because this should be intentionalized. So this should be like a variable uh, that says that, for example, it could be publish in English, publish in French, publish in Polish, or whatever. Make a uh, reusable button that you exactly. can Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. If all of this text should be internationalized, and we should be hard coding any of these. Uh, well, I mean, we are we are the champions. Name at the top of the page is probably okay. Uh, but for um, a beginner level project, you wouldn't. Yeah. Exactly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't comment totally on this. Fine. Yeah. But something to bear in mind for the future. Yeah. Exactly. And then I would uh, have a look at uh, the code and stuff. So I, I suppose one of the things that is standing out to me straight up is hard coding uh, like the database link. And also, if you're watching this, obviously, you know, after this review, go and um, update your database uh, URL like that. So I will probably avoid publishing it or restrict your database to, to the usage. Um, and then, yeah, the way your know, things are fairly clean, there are a um, couple of uh, a couple of things that stand out to me is that the usage of comments is good, but they're mostly comments for yourself. So when, you, when you're writing code, what I'm trying to focus on is that code is read more than it's written. Hmm. Just by, by the nature of it. Yeah. Even, even for you yourself. So you will read the code more than you write it. Um, which is why if you're going for comments, uh, you should probably try to make them, you should probably write them in a way that will make you think, you know, if I come across this in three months, will I understand what it means? <laughs> yeah, it's actually helpful. Uh, I do wonder whether this was a list of to-dos that came with the project. Uh, and that's why it's kind like of in but a way, we talk about it hypothetically about comments. We can use this as yeah, an example. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, for example, uh, comment like database and stuff. I, I can read that this is setting up the database, and I can read that uh, these are inputs that you get from HTML. A lot of code is self-explanatory. Some people yeah. say it all code should be self-explanatory, but that's not always feasible in my view. Yeah, um, if a code is convoluted, uh, you should probably write what it does or what at least you think it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, but most of the time, when you're writing comments, you also should say why the code does something. So if you feel like explaining something, you should try to explain why somebody has done it like that. So they have the context. Um, I think a good rule of thumb for this is, if you've spent a lot of time working out why, well, what something does and why, 
add a comment to help the next person or future you so you don't have to rework out what it all does. Yeah, exactly. Um, so from... Tammy says, code is read more than it's written. Remember? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, again, that's not my phrase. I, I think somebody here has come up with it. True. Um, I would say that, you know, like I mentioned in um, uh, Michael Lynch's article that uh, formatting and stuff like that. So there are, there are bits about inconsistent formatting, uh, which huh. I think would be, um, like I suppose if we just extend this a little bit, is that, I'm wondering if that's scrimper formatting or, no, maybe not. Uh, but those you can probably do uh, with a linter. And again, it, it, it's not your fault in Scrubber because Scrubber kind of doesn't, kind of doesn't do that. Um, it can do that. If yeah. you do, I think it's Command uh, K, release, and then Command F. Yes. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I only found that out recently. Ah, there you go. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it will format it out for you. So uh, that's pretty useful. There are a lot of, um, uh, for example, like variables that you're using, like let, but I haven't seen you trying to mutate those variables. Um, mm. So I'll probably, uh, because again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I understand that from JavaScript perspective, uh, oftentimes let and const, um, you know, some people, or you can use var as well, you know, so it depends how how Let's deep in the weeds. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends so on your view on this particular matter. But I would say that const usually serves as well as a, um, well, it, it usually signifies something to other people. So, you know, if you if you say that it's a const, then I know 100% that you're not going to try to do something with it. And if you're declaring it as a let, this kind of gives me a hunch that you're probably trying to update this variable somewhere further down the line. Mm. Uh, and if you don't do that, then usually it makes me a little bit kind of like raise my eyebrow and think, hmm, what, 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 was the, what was the intent here? I've heard it said that a variable should be a const unless it has to be a let. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, probably, that's probably a good, yeah, good default. Uh, and again, you can mutate a const. Uh, you can change a const, like for example, const. If you declare an object, you can then yes. mutate properties, <laughs> yeah. properties inside, and it usually catches a lot of people out. Um, so yeah, try to keep your eye on that. Okay, lovely. So let's move on because um, we have several reviews to get through. But first, a question from the chat. You all up? Um, how can I improve my skill of reviewing others' code? I don't know why I don't understand a thing when I read another person's code. Well, your um, love, I quite often don't understand my own code, so, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, could be, that could be twofold. Um, it could be that you're just not used to reading code. And another thing is, well, I would say that you're probably not particularly used to uh, the reading. Well, yeah, you, you can't read other people's code. And also in other people's code is maybe not that particularly readable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it is. It might not be you. Yeah. <laughs> it could be you, but it could be someone else. Um, and uh, it depends on, depends on personal preferences and stuff like that. Um, but to make sure that it's not you is, I suppose you just need to try to get to read as much different code as possible. So you go to like open source libraries, you read your company's code, you read code of other students on Scrimba, uh, and you just try to get used to it as much as you can. Sounds good. Um, moving on, the next one we have, ooh, exciting. Um, oh yeah, there was. Um, this is not on Scrimba. No, that, that's all right. Yeah, because there is a link here. Uh, oh, okay. On well, hang on. Let me share it with the lovely public. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so this is a movie search app. That's right. What would you say about this one? Uh, so the movie search app, I think that's one of the projects that we have in the, in the career path and the boot camp uh, that basically you build uh, movie search. And again, as I said before, you know, um, 
I look into the app and I try to play around with it just to get the feel for how um, I'm going to go about the reviewing it. So, you know, I saw that there is um, already a placeholder. So let's go into that placeholder and uh, I already click enter, but nothing happens. So you like my first straight up point is try to do primary action on key press enter. It's free quick change. You know, you mm -hmm. just literally go like, uh, you know, event listener on key press. If it's a button enter, you can look up the code for it. I think it's like 63, 76. Don't remember. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I have, but yeah, should be easy. Yeah. Enough. And then you basically just call the function that you call on the search button. Yeah. Do the same thing. Uh, it's, an, it's a good quality of improvement for your users. Cause when you do an on click, does it not do that automatically? No, because I'm pretty sure that actually when you when you click the oh, let's have a look at this code. Um, no, in the JS. Um, Maybe it actually doesn't. Let's see. Search. Search title. Can you not, oh, is that the name of the button? Or can you search for event listener? No. On click. Yeah, add event listener on click. Uh, yeah, button on click. There you go. And that switches that. Hmm. Yeah, so unfortunately, no, doesn't do that. Anyway, so once we search, okay, yeah, that does take stuff. Uh, also, oh, the Blade Runner. Great movie. Yeah, uh, I usually open up network. If I can see that there is like uh, calls uh -huh. and stuff, so I'll just open up the network and I'll search that again to see how that's done. So what's this telling you? Uh, so usually what I'm gonna try to see if like there are subsequent requests and how quickly they happen. So usually people tend to, for example, I can see that there is uh, one request with a response and then there is a bunch of requests for posters straight after that. And they were all done at the same time. Right, so there is a waterfall, so one request. And then after that, there is a bunch of requests fired up at the same time. And I know that the, just this a particular API, that's how it behaves. Um, but sometimes what you can see is there is one request for all the movies, and then every poster is fetched sequentially, like one after another, which is why the app usually goes a little bit slow. So yeah, well done on that. So how do you know from this that they're all at the same time? Because uh, they look in the waterfall, they look exactly, you see like they're aligned with this line all roughly about the oh, same time. Oh, right. Oh, okay. And uh, this and request that's what was- you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> and good. this request was the first. Cool. Uh, okay, so in that case, then I'll have a look at, um, there is like a button, watch, okay. So I can, I can add to my watch list. Um, but I don't think I can remove from the watch list. So I'll quickly pop that into review. Like, uh, mm. what am I supposed to do if I add it, but I want to remove it? Or yeah, is it, <laughs> yeah, or is it something that you do in the next review, in the next PR? Maybe remove functionality mm. is it's coming. Not part of this yeah. Of this one. yeah. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, then I go to my watch list. Cool. Nice. I can see the movies. Uh, but then I'm like, how do, how do I go back? How do I go back to the search results? I can't, I can't see how I go back to the search results. Mm -hmm. ah, and if I search again, then my watch list seems to... So if I search this again, the movies that I have already added, see, they are not showing as added. So there's some improvements on functionality. Yeah, so you will need to double check uh, t results against what you have in your uh, local storage, you'll need to see, hey, um, do I still have it there? And then you'll need to display saying like, already in my playlist. Um, Let's talk a bit about separation of concerns I see you've noted down here. What was your thought on that? Uh, so, uh, Oops. All right. causing chaos, yes. Yeah, so for for the separation of concern, there are there are a couple of uh, so you have like there is a lot of DOM manipulation uh, within within like the display stuff. So you have hmm. there's like a lot of 
how to describe it better, I suppose. Functions are doing more than one thing. Yes, you have. Uh, when th this code is a little bit tricky to review because you kind of have to go through and read it line by line to try and to understand what's actually happening with it. Yeah. And it's okay if you're the only person who makes it and you're it, you're the only maintainer and it all makes sense to you, hopefully. Um, Is that okay? I'm not sure. I mean, look, if, if you're organized <laughs> and it works for you, good. Uh, but if I had if I had that as like submitted to a company code base, my main worry would be mainly that, like how maintainable is this? Uh, so I would try to see, you see there are a lot of query selectors and stuff. So I would try to extract these items into like, what is this function? Uh, like search button, you know, uh, extract that into a separate function, which is called search. You know, then you have, um, movie data display, and that seems to be uh, adding also a lot of uh, spans and stuff. So maybe like you want to extract this generation separately. Hmm. So, you know, you get movie data. Um, oh, okay, and that loops through. Yeah, so it's like I have to remind myself, even though I review, I already looked at this code literally a handful of, like in the, in the morning, a couple of hours ago. Um, I still have to remind myself, oh, is that is that what it does? Is that how it works? Um, so is this a good approach? You have each function only does one thing. Um, I think that that's kind of a bit of a trope, that one function. But I suppose it should be able to achieve one goal. Like, you know, if, if you display films, that's what your function does. You obviously try not to go into if you have 20 layers of different things. You can probably group them together and stuff, but they should all be themed together in a way. Like for example, uh, this click on the search. Oh no, sorry, added to add to watch list, um, and then you try to get the movie URL. So for example, mm. here you try to do uh, the URL call and you get the movie data and there is a separate function for it. Um, but then if that gives you an error, what do you do then? So basically you will, you'll start adding error handling code and this will very quickly devolve. Spiral your... out of control. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, uh, and also, yeah, uh, one, one aspect, <laughs> like the good example of uh, handling concerns separately is uh, get movie data where you basically, you fetch this and then you re return the data. So that's a very good example. Um, I'll probably just extend this function to handle errors a little bit better because here is just, you know, what if it doesn't return it? But, you know, what if the movie doesn't exist? What if, uh, what if the user canceled the request? What if uh, something else, you know, so, so this is a little bit limited for uh, uh, an actual URL. URL. Not okay. Yeah, but could be any other issue. But it. there are lots of other errors that still need to be handled. Okay, thank you for that, and thank you for submitting. And um, question from Zuhair: I've been focusing on Laravel and also following a Scrimba, and I feel stuck. Is it okay that that happens? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I get stuck every day. Do you? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh. I would say that's bread and butter. That's where you get. That's where you get paid for. You you get stuck <laughs> and you try to figure out. Yeah, it is normal. Very normal indeed. So don't worry. <laughs> Keep on going. We all get stuck sometimes. Yes. Um. I will now literally hand you over <laughs> to Michael on this laptop. Okay. For the next one, which is another. I hope it's a different one. Um. <coughs> Oh yeah, it is. We are the champions app. What did you make of this one, Michael? So I think it was very similar in terms of Yeah, there you go. So there are already some some others. Uh but I think it kind of struggled with the same Oh no, sorry. Uh I must have been another one. We had a lot of uh, similar submissions, so I must have uh, forgot some of them. But 
with embedded page, please fill out the fields. Yeah, so there you go. So there is some warning already on this one. And then... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, there is already some warning. And then it does say, please fill out all the fields. But uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit friendly if you get told what fields. Ooh, which which one is actually yeah, missing? Exactly. Uh, I had one like that the other day. I don't remember what it was, but it said, you haven't completed all the fields. And there were like 50 fields. And I was like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then also, I noticed that in the in the submitted bit, uh, where you actually write about who um, these these endorsements, uh, you're not actually using the results of the two field. So, like, you submit from Michael to Leanne, uh -huh. uh, and then yeah, it just says from Michael, and then the message. So you kind of not really using the field too, which uh, you know if you're collecting the form, it's probably there is some purpose to it, but it mm -hmm. wasn't used. So just something to point out that maybe maybe there was a field missing. Uh, anyway, and then yeah, I noticed that once you once you refresh. Um, actually, I think that's. If I can find that, if you just quickly refresh this page again. Yeah, so there is, like, if I refresh the page on, on there, it has stored, it, it obviously pulls messages from my local storage, but there are lots of, like, undefined messages. Oh. That somehow we're there, but I didn't quite figure out where they come from. So we're trying to look into like what causes these empty messages. Like that, it, yeah, basically uh, in the review. And the, the, the thing with code review in general is that you're not trying to bug fix for the code submitter. You know, if, if you find these bugs like that, you'll just say, hey, I noticed this functionality working throw it back over the wall like all that uh <laughs> well yeah exactly because it's not like you know if you write code and then you just throw it into the code review and code the reviewer is supposed to be fixing all of these issues then that is throwing over the wall <laughs> so you're kind of like you know batting yeah. it back uh you're saying like hey uh I'm not exactly sure what that is but i won't really sink my time into trying to figure out because i'm not the one who, who was writing it yeah. Uh, so you should try to. And I think that's something that's very easy to start accidentally doing as you're reviewing, like. Oh, what is this thing? And like I you're trying to like, like spend time yeah. into trying to fix it and stuff. But yeah. uh, I think that that's. So help that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If the if the code reviewer comes to you and says, "Hey, uh, I'm having this issue. Can you help me figure out?" Sure. Uh, but if that's if that's not the case, then you'll probably go and say. Uh, Look, do you need help? Like, if you need help figuring this out, let's let's do it. Don't um, default to it. Yeah, basically. but other than that, uh, I'll leave you to it. Any other comments on this code? Uh, so I would say that uh, the code itself. Uh, let me just quickly pull up my notes. Mm. Yep. Uh, that's that one. No, that one. Yeah, that's. Uh, sorry. Uh, one of the notes I had is... Error handling? Yeah, error handling. So uh, there was like some database access point. I'm not entirely sure if this is my screen just on my laptop that is like that, or is it... Is it a bit... I think it's just on my laptop that... Mm, this mini browser is a little bit... Oh, there you go. Ah, okay, fine. Lovely. Okay. Um, I remember that I noted that when database errors get handled, like there is not much, um, when you're trying to get data from a database, there is not much error handling. I'll try to find where. Shout out in DB. Yeah. So you get. Get the access snapshot uh, values. Yeah, there you go. So if I should to get key values from database from your Firebase instance, yeah. 
And I would say that, you know, try to try to handle the errors like what if uh, with the entries, not in the DB, what if you're trying to, what you're trying to, and I think that's where these undefines come from. Right, so it's like you're trying to access something that is not there, um, and there's no error handling to do it, so it gives you undefined. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I suspect, um, uh, but this is again uh, specific to this one. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for this. Cool. <laughs> On to some comments. Nada. I submitted a BMI calculator. We'll look at that shortly. Um, I have found it. <clears throat> Other comments? This is going back to one we saw earlier. Does a function named clear endorse list L really need a comment that says clear endorse list function? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is what I mean by a lot yeah. of code can be self explanatory. Yeah, exactly. Good naming. Yeah, you probably don't need, if, if the function is named clear enough and you think that that's clear enough. Uh, I think that's all right, but like, you know, you yeah, wouldn't really, possible. you wouldn't really name a function that says, uh, you know, get user from cache, but if the user is not in cache, try to get them from the database, <laughs> and if the user is not in the database, redirect user to a sign up page. That is the kind of function right. name I end up writing sometimes. So, <laughs> so effectively, you will need at some point because you will. You know, when people say, like, oh, functions should do only one thing, it's like, well, yeah, but occasionally you do have a piece of functionality that will do multiple things, like, you know, check hash, check database, redirect if not. Um, you know, like, do you... Because you're not split them out into functions. And so you will split them out, like... In that function. Yeah, you, you would have a cache check, you would have a database check, and then you'll have a redirect as three separate functions, I suppose. And then you will say... You know, validate uh, user exists, uh, and in that case, but you know, validate user exists is not then explaining what exactly it does, uh, because it gives you the intent as well. So you will always have to find the balance between giving the reader the intent of the function and what it's supposed to do. Um, mm. well, that can be quite difficult. Yeah, so you will have to pick pick and choose, uh, and most time developers go for intent because it's just much more succinct. And then in the comments, you can probably spell out what it's supposed to do or why it's supposed to do, um, that kind of stuff. Good. Paul says, in my opinion, simple comments are fine, especially if they help the programmer maintain their code by separating blocks of related code. Yes. Um, in practice, though, I have found that occasionally there is some business requirement where you have to write absolutely hideous code. <laughs> and uh, the reason for that is because there is some legislation that tells you that you have to do it this way, or there is some business mm -hmm. outcome that says you have to do it this way, or you had got some kind of, um, I don't know, some, you had, it to, you had to be certified for a particular thing. And as a result, you have to do this other thing that does not, look very intuitive. So you have, again, to sometimes spell out uh, a lot of things in the comments or link to like your uh, task board issues where this issue is a bit more, or you link to like a Google Doc or a Word Doc, that kind of thing, to get more context. But quite often your comment would say like, like we know this is not proper, and the reason it's not proper, because Link. We're stuck with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and whoever comes to this code should not go. Basically, you're trying to warn them. Do not fix this. This is supposed to be like that. Don't tell me. I already know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Nada submitted a BMI calculator, which I have now dug out. OK, yeah. I haven't seen this one, so. No, this is of... going to be literally a live review. Particularly. Yeah. How do I even share? Uh, Oh, okay. I need to put that in. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. A BMI calculator. So. Okay. Hopefully not it's still there. Yeah, if there not, we go. Maybe they'll watch later. But what did you reckon of this? Right. So. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the one who critiques uh, like the design aspects of it. 
But I would say that there are some uh, some issues with like layout and responsiveness to this. Simple fix would be a max width problem. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Like the button and and the things they jump around a little bit. So uh, I'll probably go out of that one. And then obviously, like design wise, you know, it it looks a little bit. Uh, it could be a little bit more cohesive, I suppose. I think the contrast on that button could be improved quite a lot. So if you had a white text on the calculate BMI button, yeah, exactly. it'd be easier to read. And as you can see, a lot of front end code review is not really reviewing code as such, but kind of like commenting on other aspects of it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a way to test it. Hopefully this will work. Um, no, it won't. <laughs> Quite often, although not always, when you hover over things. Yeah, so if you, you hover over that button, is there no uh, yeah, look, there, there should be. Yeah, there you go. Oh, keyboard focus, but contrast. Right? 244. Right, Accessibility, yeah. contrast. So it's like the second part of it. And then you can see the um, uh, yellow thing. Yeah. What you want mark. is an ice cream tick. So that's, yeah, so you can probably move that. There's also coolers. What were we talking about? Mm, contrast. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, contrast checker. This is quite a good one as well. And um, if it's not good, it can give you examples of how to fix it. So definitely check that one out. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I suppose, what is this color? Um, so, the, uh, just blue. And I'm not entirely sure what the color of the background is, but we can probably look at the code. But, you know, the, what is it? Yeah, I think you can just do this. Yeah, I already yeah. told you. Body, there we go, dark cyan, if that's how you say it. Yeah. You might just be able to type it in there. No. No. <laughs> oh, That's a bit annoying. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> yes, you, you already got that. You know, it's a 244, so you're probably looking to up that a little bit. Uh, I also noticed there's two H1s, I believe, which you only really want one of those on each page. Yeah. So when I refresh, um, there is also, I think there are also some validation warnings that you get um, within Spring. Oh. So you should probably Very nice. check that sound. Um, Yes, so H4 you should probably not be a child of another H four. Yeah, so you should probably fix this validation as well because it is kind of a fair point. Um, yeah, and then uh, type your mass in kg and uh, type your height in. Yeah, so you probably want to make sure the text. Um, nice bit of padding around there would be nice. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering if uh, maybe a little bit better would be like um, a te piece of text that goes over that. Yeah, so yeah. a label that you have. A label is more accessible as well. Oh, so it's all, oh no, it seems like, are you doing it all through? Okay, it's in React. Um, yeah, so, what is that? Do, 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 do. Right, so, mm -hmm. like that. I don't think it's self-closing. Right, there's not. Um, let's remember. <laughs> Label HTML. There we go. Yeah. So you should probably say label for. Um, so these would need an ID then to link them to the label. Yeah, so. I'll probably just say here, wait. I suggest you play around with it. So you say a label wait and then. Oh, look at that. Someone helpfully found the colors. <laughs> I've done that right. Label input. All right, all right. So it's. I and think you, you can do the yeah. bottom one, but the top one's the better one to do. Right, and then... I don't yeah. actually know if it's better, it's just the one I would do. Yeah, and then you see you need to also give... Right, and then you also give an ID. Yeah, 
Yes, link them with an ID. You should do the trick. For wait, ID wait. Our input self closing. Ah, uh, right. Input. HTML four. Sorry. Of course. I've forgotten how to do these labels in React. Uh, label HTML React because. Or label to an attribute. It's just um, the same, isn't it? No, I think it's like prefixed. Uh, HTML4. Yeah, I think that's all that's what I did. Oh, right. So it's like class and class name. Yeah, that's right. That's because it's compiling to JS, so it needs to half of the property as you would write it if you were writing it like create element and set attribute. Mm. Yeah, learned that the other day. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure why that's not adding it. Label input. I do have an idea of weight and they still have full weight. I'm wondering if there is some other, something else that prevents it from working. It might be like overriding or something. Yeah, but basically, oh no, hang on, it's right there. What am I talking about? <laughs> okay. Anyway. It, it's, <laughs> anyway. It's pretty hard. Yes. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, there is a way for them. You also have an issue that you probably need to style it as well, so it's a little bit further up. Yes. Uh, but yeah, and I think you probably with the label you can also tell users like you know kg or something like that. Anyway, so does that work? Uh, anyway, at the risk of disclosing more weight, what am I? Seventy-seven. And uh, isn't that height in meters? Is it height in meters? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not that tall. I'm not 175 meters tall, <laughs> uh, which I have no idea ways in uh, for Americans. Um, 175, there you go. Oh, wait, what? Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, wow. No, you it's actually know? not. Oh, hold on. So above 24.9, it's like... Mine is 25, so above 25 to... No, wow, okay, well, I have learned something. I'm all awake, apparently. <laughs> Live reaction cam. Yeah, I know. So what you could do then is maybe style this. because You probably want to round it to something a little bit full. Yeah. Round it to the, oh, right, round that number. I thought you meant round your weight down. Normal. No, 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 normal. <laughs> so, I mean, I can't round my weight down. So now normal, um, it says normal. I should probably be red. like color coded as well. Like you can say normal as in green, and then if you if you go a little bit yeah. further up, this should probably be like yellow. You know. Yeah, you could do things. Yeah, like that. kind of stuff like that. Um, quick. Oh wow! Well, I have learned that I'm actually weight severely. Oh, is it not? No, it, no, no. It's like slightly over the borderline. Is it twenty nine point nine? And I'm what? Um, what does it say? Oh, 25. Oh, no. So I'm like 0. 0.2 over. Ah. Oh. I mean, surely that's good news. Um, if you ever. Or maybe need... I should just like Grover a couple of times. That, that, that's an option. <laughs> it's probably a bit late now. <laughs> um, if you ever need to change one type of color to another type. So we were struggling earlier because yeah. um, the colors used. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> it's uh, this one. Ah, the colors used here um, used the classic color names like blue and light cyan, and we didn't know how to convert them. Yeah. <laughs> you can put them into here W3 schools. So you can check those out. And uh -huh. then there's this Cooler's color contrast checker, which Harsh here has helped out. I'm not sure which one's which, but let's find out. 018. A A C. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that's the blue. I think that's the cyan. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. And the other one is zero one uh, zero D F D. Yeah. Um, so that is that what we have for the button? background color. Oh, it's the other way around. Well, I mean, it's um, the button is this color with a black text, isn't it? Yeah. Which is. Uh, so for small text, oh, I see. It says it's good, but it could be better. No, but hang on. The, the color is the, of the button is blue. So that was uh, zero from zero in the And that is bad, yes. So then you can click to fix oh, only the background color. All right. <laughs> A completely different color. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> I mean, this is not what Scrimba has. No, yeah, it does look like a very. Scrimba yeah, that looks very Scrimba. Maybe that's how we picked our main color, <laughs> the one that is good for contrast. Quick FYI, there are huge issues with BMI as a health indicator. Yes, do not take with I mean, yeah, tell me about it. I can already advice. tell. <laughs> I do not think I am that overweight. I mean, I'm a little bit chubby, but this I wouldn't call myself overweight. A code review only. Harsh yeah, not, not a health review. Where do we submit our code for review? Um, we previously had a questionnaire form thing in the description, um, which we will also do when we do future code reviews on this channel. So keep an eye out on that. I think we have four more minutes left yeah. for a final one. Do we do we have all the questions answered? Yes. Well, I mean, as far as we can. Fair enough. Here we go. Ah, right. Another movie one. What did you reckon of this? Uh, so with this one, I think that was probably well, like, one of the one of the better examples that we had because I can remember that. Okay, so let's type Blade Runner. Look yeah. at that on it actually worked. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ignore that error. I'm not entirely sure what that was, but well, usually when I review, I would note it down very briefly just to see what it actually what it actually was. Uh, and then when you add, there is like this. Really handy green tick. Look at that. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, but another thing which was the same that, you know, when, when you click, can I remove it? Can it like be on a timer so I can remove it later? That kind of stuff. Anyway, when you go to the watch list, ah, that's where you can remove it. You can remove it in the watch list. Oh. But I also have a feeling like I've added three films. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I can't go back to the search results, so I'll need to search again. Uh, and then, as with the previous one, uh, you probably want to you probably want to show films that are already in your watch list because I'm fairly certain I have added it. You probably want to display like a green tick. And when you hover over it, you can probably, oh, should I remove it? Because I think if you add it again, oh, it doesn't get added. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, so from there. Um, hmm. Template lift tools are used, but not consistently. Yeah, so there is, um, so there is a template literal here and. Uh, is it? Yeah, so uh, there is. Like, where's the template literally? Well, the, these actually, yeah, you're right. Sorry, uh, so this could just be a string because there is not, no variable interpolated, so not particularly required. Um, and then there it's used, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then another one which is, but I can kind of see why you've done this one because you wanted to, um. Yeah, you have double quotes, so you wanted to avoid the issue of like single double quotes and stuff like that. So yeah, fair enough. It, it's a minor thing. Usually, again, uh, error handling with the APIs. Um, what is it? Here, there you go. So you basically you fetch, uh, and you 
expect that this fetch always succeeds. So the API is never down, it always works. Uh, optimism for you. Yeah, uh, but you do need <laughs> to catch errors and handle errors throughout. So it's like, what if the response is incorrect? What if the data is not there? What if, uh, what if that, that movie wasn't found? You know, what if it doesn't exist with that title? Um, you know? And then I'll probably remove the API key from this string. So I'll try to abstract it away. <clears throat> um, so basically, this dot then needs to have a catch, and then uh, this dot then also needs a catch. So what, what are you going to do if they don't work? What, what if this data doesn't pass? What if the fetch doesn't succeed? So yeah, same same stuff. Um, I'll probably also use uh, try catch with a sync await, which I don't know. It's just my preference. You can probably do it with dot catch. So if you want it, you can go for that. Good stuff. Thank you for this. Nardo is back. Um, I've just learned from a couple of weeks of more advanced aligning stuff in CSS and to improve responsiveness. Mm, Great nice. stuff. I'm 13. Wow, well done. For a 13 year old, you know what? That, 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 was, that was decent. So, Absolutely. not bad at all. Not bad at all. Good job to you. Um, we would like to do more code reviews in the future. There cool. is a form in the description box, which I've just shared here. There you are. <laughs> Very catchy URL there, but it is in the description below. So if you'd like us to review your code, yes. pop it in there, and when we have enough, we'll do another stream. Wonderful yeah. stuff. Absolutely. Yes. Oh. Go for it. Thank you for reviewing, Michael. Thank you for submitting your reviews, everyone. Any closing thoughts? Uh, ooh, almost. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, not too far off, is it? Yeah, it's not too far off. If you're wondering about Michael's clothes peg, it's not any kind of political symbol. It's uh, <laughs> he's lying in the washing up. Yeah, I was just hanging in the washing up. <laughs> okay, everyone, keep an eye on the YouTube channel for our future streams, and we'll see you all next time. Yes. Bye, everyone. See you later, everyone.